In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we write the equation of a circle. Writing equations for geometric figures when we're graphed in a coordinate plane is pretty important. We've already studied how to do it for a line. We know that if we know some certain parts of the line, we can figure out the location of any x and y coordinate. And our equation gives us the relationship between the x value and the y value. But what do we need to do that? Well, we know for a line, we need to know a point and the slope of the line. And if we have that, we're able to write our equation using different equations. One example would be like the y equals mx plus b equation. That's used for a line, of course, but what about a circle? How do we say the relationship between any point, x and y, on a circle? How does the x-coordinate relate to the y-coordinate of a circle? And the answer is, first of all, you need a radius and a center. So you're going to need to know what the radius of your circle is and where the center is. We'll draw it out to this point. What's the radius? And then a little help from the Pythagorean theorem will work. So let me show you with this demo. Shown on this circle, we have a point P, and as we drag it around, we can see that the radius of the circle, of course, doesn't change, which shouldn't change. It's a circle, after all. But let's draw in the triangle that shows also the x values and the y values for point P. And what do you notice? We get a right triangle. And simply, the Pythagorean theorem is relating the x, the y, and the radius value. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This gives us the equation of our circle. The only thing we need to take note of, and if we show the grid you'll see it, is the radius of the circle since it never changes. What is it in this circle? Let's bring it up here to the value on our y-axis. You can see the radius of the circle is 20. And so as I rotate this around, the radius is always 20. Taking a look at it with the x's and the y's labeled, we see that the 20 stays constant while x and y change. And so x squared plus y squared always equals 400. Why 400? Well, 20 squared is 400. So the equation of a circle, when its center is here at the origin, is simply the Pythagorean theorem. That's good news for us because we know the Pythagorean theorem well. So on our circle, any, any point with coordinates x and y can be described using the Pythagorean theorem. If we come out horizontally x and go up vertically to our point y, we are building a right triangle, and we know that x squared plus y squared will always equal our radius squared in a circle. Now important on that is that the center has to be at the origin for this to work. So the center needs to be at 0, 0, and the radius will be r. Now a good question to ask is what if the center is not at the origin, like in our second picture? If the center is not at the origin, then we have to make some adjustments. So here the center is located at what they, they're calling hk. Those, of course, are going to be specific numbers in any problem. And the radius is still r. How do we get the equation in this case? It turns out the equation is going to be written like this. It's going to be x minus the h coordinate of the center. That is going to be squared plus the same thing for y. We're going to take y minus the y-coordinate of the center, which is k, and that's going to be squared, and that's set equal to r squared, just like it is from before. So the h and the k are the center of the circle. Why does this formula work? Why are we subtracting the h and the k? Well, it's a pretty simple example, and we can show again with this demo. Here's a circle, and notice that the center of the circle is here at the coordinates 20, 10. It's got a radius of 18. This is the equation for that. We have x minus 20 squared plus y pl minus 10 squared equal to 18 squared, which is 324. So why are we subtracting the 20 and the 10? Well, remember that the center used to be at the origin. And so what that subtraction does is it's taking the center back. We're doing a translation. Watch what happens when I drag. If I want to get my x-coordinate of 20 to go back to 0, I simply have to back up 20 units to make it 0. How far do I have to bring the 10 down to get it to be 0? Well, I just need to bring it down 10 units to bring it back to the center. So that subtraction that you see in the equation is simply moving the vertex, is simply moving the center back to the origin. We would just subtract the coordinates of the vertex. All right, let's look at a bunch of examples. Here we're given information about a circle centered at 5, negative 9, and a radius of 8. So we're going to just use this equation to write our circle. 
And we're simply going to make substitutions. H and K are found as our X and Y coordinates of our center. So those just are going to go right into the equation. We'll start out with X minus 5 for the first part. And we're going to add in our second part, in these parentheses, we're going to take Y minus K, or Y minus negative 9. Be careful with the double negative there. That's Y plus 9. And our radius is 8. So when we bring it down, it's going to be squared in the formula. We're going to have 64 for that. And that is the equation of the circle. Similar thing on this next example. Let's bring in our format for our equation. And then let's pull in the information we need, making substitutions. So negative 4 is our h, 0 is our k, and the radius is the square root of 7. How are we going to deal with that? We're going to need to take the square root of 7 and square it. So remember, squaring square roots just undoes both of them. They're inverse operations. So we'll just get 7 for that part of our equation. So our final answer here is going to be x minus the negative 4. Make that x plus 4 squared plus y minus k. Now if k is 0, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to write y minus 0. y minus 0 is just y. So in this case, we drop it out and we would just say y squared. And that's equal to our radius squared. Remember that dropped our square root, so that's going to equal 7. There's our answer for the second example. Let's read this third example. We're centered at the origin and we have a diameter of 10. So the careful reading here. When we bring this down, what are we going to do for our center? Well, our origin is 0, 0. That's 0 for h and 0 for k. So that means that when we make our substitutions, that's just like up here. x minus 0 is just x. So this is simply x squared. Here, another example, that's just going to be y squared. And that's going to be equal to the radius squared. Well, our radius this time isn't given to us. We're given the diameter is 10. So of course, we're going to cut that in half to get the radius. Go ahead and square it when you bring it into the formula. 5 squared is 25. So this equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. There's your equation for that circle. Bit more challenging for this one. This time we get the graph and no more information. So we're going to have to figure out the center and the radius ourselves. Let's take a look at what we can figure out. If I'm looking carefully, notice you're going to want to walk around this circle and find some points that are easy to read on the graph. They intersect those grid lines really well, like these. And this, these are kind of convenient, because if I draw across, I get to connect one to the other. In other words, that's a diameter, and this way we have another diameter. So this one, I was able to find the center pretty well right there. Let's read the coordinates of the center point. It's 2, negative 2. So our center is 2, negative 2. I'm going to move this down. Let's write that out. So again, center is 2, negative 2. And let's go back to our graph and see if we can figure out the radius of the circle. Not too hard. We know the center, and we can come out, let's say, for the example, this point right here. How far is that? Just a quick count of that is easy. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4. So the radius is 4. And now it's just like the other problems. We can just plug these right in. Let's go back to our center. So center is 2 for h and negative 2 for k. So what does that say about this side of the equation? We're going to take x minus 2 squared. We're going to go with y minus the negative 2. That's going to be positive. y plus 2 squared. And set that equal to our radius squared. So when we square 4, we're going to get 16. And there's our answer for this equation. This example, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have to figure out our center. This time they told it to us, negative 3, 2. That's pretty nice. The radius, though, they've left up to us. So let's figure out what the radius equals. Now the radius is going to be on a slant this time. So it's not going to be an easy count. You can't count on a diagonal. What we're going to want to do here is employ our Pythagorean theorem that we've seen so many times. Let's come from the center to our point on the circle just by going again straight out on the horizontal and straight up on the vertical to make a little right triangle that we can do some counts on. So how long is that horizontal distance? If you count the grid, you got five units on the horizontal and it's two units on the vertical. So just some Pythagorean theorem work for us to do. We're going to go 2 squared plus 5 squared equals radius squared, r squared. And let me put r in the triangle too. All right, so I've got 4 and 25. When I square those for a total of 29 is r squared. And that would make r equal to the square root of 29. 
But I think that this is actually going to be more valuable to me because that's what I have to plug in right over here into my equation. So this is 29 on this part of the equation. Let's record, though, that the radius is the square root of 29. OK, the rest of this is substituting. So let's put in our h and our k into the equation. That's x minus negative 3. Let's go x plus 3 squared and y minus 2 squared equal to 29. And there's the equation for that circle. All right, let's see if we can do this backwards. We're going to state the coordinates of the center and the measure of the radius, and then we get to graph a circle. OK, so let's start with center. Looking at this equation, we should be able to read the coordinates of the center from the help that we get seeing in these x and y parentheses. What are we subtracting? We need to be subtracting something. So if we're adding it, you want to break it up and say that's x minus negative 3. Here it is again. If we're adding, that can be turned into subtraction with an x minus negative 2. So the center is what you're subtracting. You're subtracting negative 3, and you're subtracting negative 2. Now the radius is going to be found here. Remember, though, that this is the radius squared. So if we set that equal to r squared, 64 is r squared, then the radius is going to be the square root of 64. What's the square root of 64? That's 8. So we have a center of negative 3, negative 2, and a radius of 8. Let's go graph that, starting with the center. So plotting the point at negative 3, negative 2, and then I need to go out in all directions 8 units. Well, I'm just going to go up and over and down, and then we'll draw in our circle. Probably won't be perfect. OK, so counting up, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to be right here. And then out, the same 8 out is here. And let's go out 8 the other direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm off the grid a little bit. That's OK. I can just extend the point out there. And then down 8, barely hitting the edge of our graph. So those four points are on our circle. Then we just draw in our circle. And you'll get better at this. This is kind of hard on a computer. Holy cow. OK. You get the idea. We're not mocking the artwork, people. All right, another chance to try that. So this time we need to get, again, the center. Well, I'm not subtracting anything from the x. So if I had to say I'm subtracting something, I would say I'm subtracting nothing, 0. So that's another way to look at this one. Everything else would be the same, of course. OK, so as far as the center goes, reading it from this parenthesis, I've got 0. And what am I subtracting? I'm subtracting 2. So 0, 2 is the center. The radius, the radius squared is 16. So the radius is the square root of 16. And that does simplify to 4. So I have a center, 0, 2, radius of 4. Let's graph that. OK, 0, 2, that's 0 on x and 2 on y. Here's the center. And then we're going to go out just like we did before. We're going to go out 4 units in each direction and plot 4 key points. Uh, again, I'm off the grid, but I'm just going up 4. Come back 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And down 4 puts me here. And then draw your graph. And let's see if I can do better this time. Nope. I can't. In fact, I think I'm getting worse. All right, maybe you want a compass. That would be helpful. All right, there you go. Give the try these a shot, and we'll practice more in class, of course, and I'll see you there.